Hello and thank you for subscribing to InfoWorlds Tech. This is a channel where we explore new trends in technologies including Python programming, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, machine learning and similar. And today we're going to look at OpenCV and um, as you can see I am at the OpenCV uh, web page and um, you can see it's an open source library. It's used for programming functions um, uh, primarily for real-time computer vision. It's cross-platform and licensed under the Apache license too and it contains over 2500 algorithms. So it's a great library to uh, work with computer vision and um, best of all it's available on a number of platforms and it's open source. So let's get started and today I'm going to show you uh, or, or create this uh, tutorial for someone starting off in OpenCV so it's going to be very basic we're just going to look at some basic commands and some transformations like resizing or uh, a different color or grayscale and, and similar and um, I'm going to do it on uh, one of my favorite platforms which is Jupyter Notebook and then I'm going to create or follow up with another tutorial uh, in another uh, favorite um, coding platform which is Visual Code uh, the code will remain the same but uh, just want to give uh, a, a different perspective of how we can run this in these two different uh, platforms so uh, let's get started uh, the the first thing I'm going to do is launch my um, Jupyter notebook and you can see I've named it OpenCV demo and let's get started so the first com command that we would run is uh, to install OpenCV if you don't have it already so uh, the command is to run pip install OpenCV dash Python so I've um, run this already it's already installed and uh, the current version is 4.9.0 which I have and it also requires NumPy greater than 1.119 and, and higher and uh, this pip install will you know also install that dependency now since uh, in on my system it's already installed I can go ahead and import that library so when importing it it's actually called CV2 so note that uh, we, we reference it by OpenCV-Python but when you're using it it's uh, CV2 so let's run that and uh, uh, so let's uh, run a very simple command which is the following we're going to create a variable let's call it img and then calling the library cv2 and one of the commands which is reading so I'm going to read from a location let me just copy that location and this is the location on my local hard drive so it's um, referenced as forward slash users forward slash asif slash forward slash images and the first image that I have is and I can quickly look at it in the folder here you can see that I have it here in images and you can see I have bird in JPEG I have bird 2 in JPEG then I have a logo in PNG uh, another in PNG and yet another in also in PNG so just to show that it can uh, look at uh, JPG and PNG at least two types of formats that we, we will look at today so let's look at the first one which is bird one so I'm just going to reference that and you can see I, I add bird one dot jpg and close it off now that is assigning the image once it reads that from the local directory then uh, the next step step is to show that image so for that I'm going to use another command called im show so cv2 dot im show and um, you can reference this as you can call it anything so let's call it demo demo open cv as an example and then we are referencing that same image that we uh, just uh, wrote here and the next step uh, would be uh, to actually uh, have a wait key so let me quickly explain that uh, so when it's zero that means uh, it'll the image once it's open 
once it's read from the local drive it will stay open till um, the user presses a key um, if I, I can also give like 5 or 10 so it will wait for that uh, duration of time before closing the window and uh, then it just runs this command after that which is to uh, cvtu dot destroy all windows so it closes that um, as soon as we press the key so let's let's uh, run that command and see if uh, we are successful so when I run that so let's see it's still running so image is assigned this cv2 im im show it's referencing img and shouldn't take that long but uh, I think I have some other process running in the background which might be causing it to be delayed let's give it a second okay so the image uh, popped up right just now and um, you can see that the image is um, displayed as, as shown. Uh, let's run another one so um, let's do CV uh, sorry bird 2 this is another that image that we have and you know it displays uh, as well um, okay let's um, run a couple of more so I have I believe logo in PNG format so let's take a look at that one and that runs as well um, let's run so um, right now I'm just running the default which is um, same as if I give comma and add a one so one is reading it in color uh, it spe specifies to load a color image any transparency of the image will be neglect neglected and it is the default flag um, so we can pass that value as well and when I run it it, it gives me the same uh, no, no change the other thing we can do is and I'll just change the uh, the image here if I do this one uh, you can see it, it runs right and then I can give it a like a grayscale and for that I can select zero and when I run that it gives me in grayscale right so uh, I, I can change that Now uh, there's also another option which is minus one um, that sta stands for I am red underscore unchanged and it specifies to load an image uh, which has some transparency or opacity so since my image uh, does not have that so it will not make any difference if I load it with a minus one. So that was just um, a, a quick um, recap on how you can read a message and uh, also change it to grayscale right uh, now let's look at um, resizing an image so uh, when we are resizing let me just add that code for that so I'll do cv2 dot resize and here I will reference the same variable which is img comma I have to give it uh, a size so let's go with 400 by 400 and let's see if that works now let me assign this to another variable let's call it image2 so that when I resize the image it is read or written into image2 now when I'm writing this or, or displaying this I need to reference image2 otherwise it won't work so let's run that and let's keep that at color so let's run that and as you can see uh, when I ran it this time it's um, it's just a smaller or resize to 400 by 400 so that's a quick uh, understanding of how you can resize this and that's the syntax so simply in those brackets you can enclose the the dimensions of this image and it will uh, you know show that or display that in that with those uh, dimensions the other thing to note here is that um, after resizing I'm moving it into another uh, variable called img2 
and then when I'm running the IM show make sure that the IMG2 is referenced otherwise it won't work uh, and I just wanted to also show that here in the IM show remember we said this can be anything so I just took it as demo dash open CV and that's what you see here on the top of the display so j just a quick note to uh, make sure that you understand what's the significance of uh, naming this here now let's look at another example where uh, we can rotate the image so let's uh, let me just comment that out and let me put in cv2 dot or let's move that into image 3 as an example and this time we're going to do cv2 dot dot rotate and then referencing that original image because that's what we're reading from the uh, from the local disk and then another, another time cv2 and rotate and let's say as an example um, 180 and here when we are dis uh, displaying it I want to be able to access IMG3 which is here I want to comment out this guys right, so I'm not resizing but instead I am doing a ro rotate and uh, I'm using CB2 dot rotate underscore 180 and uh, let's run that okay so perhaps this needs to go after so let me quickly recheck so IMG3 equals CV2 dot rotate image comma CV2 dot rotate underscore 180 okay let's see and we're showing okay we ran into some issue here so IMG3 is not defined okay so IMG equals cv2 dot rotate bracket open img comma cv2 dot rotate yeah the syntax looks okay okay let's uh, look into it what are we missing here okay so once that ran um, let's run that again and okay so as you can see it's been inverted right um, let's let's look at another one and see if we can let's use another one of the images so VMware and when we run that as you can see it's uh, rotated by 180 degrees right so that's just uh, another example of how we can transform an image and rotate it and there are other options available like rotate counterclockwise or rotate uh, by 90 degrees and so on so we can always uh, you know look into those options as well now the last thing that I want to show is to be able to let's say we do some transformation of on an image and then we want to write that uh, new image or the transform image back to our local disk so the the way to do that is um, this is the command so we're going to use cv2 dot I am right right so that means you're writing you have to specify the same location right where you I mean at least where you want that to be written or if it's another location that should be fine as well in my case I'm writing in the same location that I'm reading from and uh, here I can give it um, let's say as an example uh, rotated rotated by 180 as an example right again that's just a name and uh, uh, it really doesn't matter what you name it and um, the one that we're going to do is img3 the one that we rotated uh, just right here so the syntax is cv2 dot im right 
and you're writing to you're specifying that um, the absolute path to that location and um, the image that you want to write is img3 okay let's uh, run that and see if that works okay we got an error message let's see Okay, so let's uh, give it um, the same syntax so that the one as the original and let's run that again and okay so that seemed to have executed let's go back here and you, as you can see the one that we rotated is now been written into the uh, local hard disk so this was a quick um, tutorial to show you uh, how easy it is to set up and work with images. We just looked at some basic transformations, grayscaling and resizing and um, writing to the local disk. So reading and writing. So uh, I, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And like I said, I will follow up with uh, another tutorial, similar code. And this time I'll be using visual code uh, to create that tutorial. So thank you for watching.